What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, we got to check this video out by WrestleMania. Jay Cargill to WWE. Elias is gone. Tag team exit. Major changes to WWE after sale and other wrestling news. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of uh, reports um, today talking about Jay Cargill uh, maybe uh, making her debut in WWE sometime relatively soon. I'm not sure how true that is, but we're going to check that out together. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Let's get right into this one. I'm very What is going on, guys? It is WrestleMania here, back with some more news. Join us now as we look at this week's edition of Dynamite, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including Jade Cargill WWE bound, Roman Reigns missing the Royal Rumble, as WWE already figured out the men's Royal Rumble winner, some major changes coming to WWE, Zalias gone from WWE, a tag team exits WWE, and much more. Damn. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos, and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. As always, we won't recap the show, but just look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. As always, we start off with the good as number one MJF. Oh, uh, yeah, I did. As time the math is. I did see that that clip. That shit was hilarious. The Steiner math, but he had it. Uh, he kind of put his own little spin on it. Um, him uh, talking about Samoa Joe's chances of winning the EW championship, which I do plan on streaming. Uh, uh, dynamite next week so be on the lookout for that i will be streaming dynamite next me next week but that that was i love that promo so it was just it was a call back to the steiner map but it was just so hilariously and brilliantly done man <laughs> it's a thing of a beauty for anyone who has seen big papa pumps mental gymnastics however mjf took things to the next level yeah. when he broke down samoa joe's chance of beating him next week whether you call MJF's calculation of probability and odds of a blatant ripoff of Scott Steiner or a homage, it's clear MJF added his own spin to things, taking it up a notch. Number two, Page versus Cage. Adam Cage's bout against Brian Cage was enjoyable not only due to the quality of the work in the ring, but it was a good use for one of AEW's best big men, Brian Cage. Although Cage needs to start winning more matches, AEW didn't put him in the ring against someone half his size, making him look weak in defeat. Number three, women's four-way match was entertaining. Mm. The Britt Baker, Nyla Rose, Hikaru Shida, and Tony Storm bout to determine AEW Women's Champion Soraya's opponent next week was a much-needed reminder that AEW has some true talents in its women's division. Number four, build-up for Grand Slam. A Dynamite featured a big build-up for next week's Grand Slam event, something it needs to do as ticket sales are reportedly very weak. Mm. Oddly enough, AEW seems to have spent more time building next week's TV special than it did building up its pay-per-view all-in and all-out. Yeah. Number five, which I, I do like when they do like the, their TV specials, it, it makes it makes you want to check out that particular episode because it's like a mini pay-per-view. So I do appreciate when they do the, the TV specials more than meets the eye. Does the storyline of Sammy Guevara looking to escape Jericho's shadow seem predictable? Well, traditionally, a wrestling protege comes up short against their mentor, snapping and turning heel. However, we're confident AEW will put a clever spin on things, making next week's match all the more enjoyable. Which I'm, I'm uh, looking Don forward Callis to as well. Game. It looks like Callis is doing his best to capitalize on the JS dissolving as he's now approached Sammy Guevara and Daniel Garcia about working with him. Bro, but this, this whole hip thrusting thing, I just, it's just... I mean, you can't really say much. If you grew up in the era I grew up of hitting everybody with the, the suck it crotch, uh, crotch shots, you know, uh, you know, it's kind of like, can you really say much? We was walking around telling people to suck it, you know what I'm saying? So he, except he got a little twist to his, he's hip thrusting everywhere he goes. It's it's funny, but it kind of takes you out, but it's, it's still funny, bro. <laughs> Which one y'all prefer? The DX crotch uh, chop or the, <laughs> or the, the thrust machine over here. <laughs> Both men have turned him down, but what about Jericho's other flunkies who feel cheated by him by breaking the group up? This storyline is adding some suspense to Dynamite, and with any luck, it will elevate JS members like Jake Hager and Daniel Garcia, who've been sidelined for far too long. But that was a good what about the bad is, number one, just not feeling it with Storm and Soraya. 
Mm. Is Tony Storm versus Soraya going to be a good match? Well, we'd like to think so, but the build to the match just isn't doing anything for us. The Outcast storyline has been average at best, and surprisingly, Tony Storm's defection from the group hasn't done anything to liven up the Storm Soraya program. That was nothing downright ugly as AEW did a thorough job setting things up for two major matches next week at Grand Slam and providing fans with a good enough variety of matches. AEW is still struggling with airing more competitive matches, but last night's show was an improvement over the last two weeks. What do you guys think of Dynamite this I week? did like some more Joe uh, choking out uh, Adam Cole and someone had put the clip <laughs> of Adam Cole getting choked out by Samoa Joe in NXT when he was like one of like uh, William Regal's like enforcers and uh, Adam Cole I think was feuding with Kyle O'Reilly and he shoved Samoa Joe so he took off his jacket and politely choked him out so Adam Cole he, you should be used to this my boy <laughs> Tweet. let us know in the comments down below now let's move on to the news Our first story looks at Roman Reigns missing the Rumble. Oh, on top of today's news is report that Reigns isn't advertised for the 2024 Royal Rumble. The story is certain to raise questions since the undisputed champion typically works WWE's top PLEs. Mm. According to Inside the Ropes, however, at least for now, it doesn't look like the undisputed WWE Universal Champion will be there. In the first poster for the event, the likes of Seth Rollins, Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, Finn Balor and Damian Priest are all featured but Reigns is missing. Hmm. You may recall a report that Reigns was injured at SummerSlam during his match against Jey Uso. The injury was never confirmed and no details have emerged on what it might be other than it's reportedly not serious. Inside the Ropes pointed out that Roman is being advertised for Survivor Series and is expected to feature at Crown Jewel earlier okay. in the same month. So why not Royal Rumble? Yeah, that's Next up, has WWE figured out- I don't know. I don't know. Unless you- Unless you don't have nothing set up for him for the Royal Rumble, like feud-wise. I don't know. It's going to be very interesting what they do there. About the 2024 Men's Royal Rumble winner. Now, in other Rumble news, Ringside News recently tweeted about WWE having the winner for the Men's Royal Rumble already picked out. WWE fans are buzzing about the Royal Rumble after the big location announcement today. We were told that the winner of the Rumble has been decided and it mm. hasn't changed since the decision was made when Ringside News exclusively reported it in June. Oh, so it's been decided. The wrestler in mind is LA Knight, who has come up over the last few months. However, Gimme Sport commented, Gunther seems to be the top contender to win the men's Royal Rumble match next year too. Who do you think will actually win the men's 2024? For me, it's either LA Knight or Gunther. Preferably Gunther because... You book LA Knight in that situation, he has to win the championship. It'll probably be the World Heavyweight Championship. I don't think anyone will have a problem with it, but I do think it's a little bit too soon to do that. I would like for him to win a mid-card title before we get to the main title so we can see, you know, what he can do with a mid-card championship. I think he'll be fine. And then we can go to that, to that next level. I mean, granted... You don't always have to do that. You really don't have to wait, you know, have someone win a mid-card title and then go to the to the main event scene. They could pull the trigger. It just depends on how over he is. But I honestly think if there's anybody that deserves to main event a WrestleMania just off the body of work, it's Gunther. If you're going to have him do it, I don't think anybody would trip him winning the Royal Rumble. And I definitely would love to see if they keep Seth Rollins as champion, Seth Rollins versus Gunther at WrestleMania and have Gunther do it and win, I'm all for it, bro. I'm all for it. For Rumble, let us know in the comments down below. Next up, WWE splitting up the tag titles. Oh. Now it's time for another rumor that WWE intends to split up its undisputed tag team championship. While fans have heard this rumor largely since the Usos unified the Raw and SmackDown titles in 2022, Better Wrestling Experience reports that titles will be split up very soon. The unified tag titles have been a problem beginning with Jay and Jimmy Uso. While the belts were defended fairly often, the WWE's intent to have the Usos break the record for the longest running tag team champions took away any suspense as to who beat them. Mm -hmm. When the Usos dropped the belts to Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, title defenses were limited by injuries to both men. Yeah. Creating two sets of tag titles should reduce the impact of an injured team leading to infrequent title defenses or a tournament to crown new champions. When any luck, fans might even see the WWE's tag division improve. Next well, up. here's the thing. I just think I get it. I do think they have a potentially enough teams to do that for SmackDown tag team champs and Raw tag team champs. I do believe they have enough 
teams potentially to make that work but I, I still think the division needs to be bolstered up a little bit more i would just have them change the de design and just have whoever hold those belts kind of float between shows but granted then you have a situation of what will the rest of the other uh tag teams do in waiting for an opportunity to become champs so i don't know y'all yeah that that's a good question do y'all feel like the tag titles need to be split up Again, or do y'all feel like there just needs to be one set and whoever holds the championships float between both shows? Let me know. With WWE making major changes to PLEs. Now, one of the potential changes to WWE is the way it handles its PLEs. Dave Meltzer is reporting we'll be seeing a lot of more WWE trying to get the cities to bid for at least the big shows. The goal is for all 12 pay-per-view shows. Right now, I think the goal is four or five for next year. And maybe as time goes on and as the UFC is doing well, they just went to Sydney. It was a $16 million deal to get three shows. Damn. With the WWE continuing to be a hot ticket, getting cities to bid on all of its PLEs could bring in even more revenue to the company. Facts. Next up, is Edge staying in WWE? Now it's time for an update on whether Edge is staying in WWE. PW Insider recently revealed that the Rated R Superstar was removed from the WWE's internal roster. However, PW Insider provided a recent update with WrestleTalk summarizing the story. Edge was in fact removed from the internal roster of current wrestlers, but not from the internal roster entirely. Instead, he's now listed on what's been described as miscellaneous talent mm. list, which is names that aren't currently active on either Raw or SmackDown. Others on that list, according to PW Insider, include The Undertaker, Steve Austin, Big E, Titus O'Neil, and oh, Braun wow. Strowman. What do you guys think is next for Edge? Is he AEW bound? Let us know in the comments down below. I mean, would I, I, I honestly, I, I think just the nostalgia in me would love to see Edge back in AEW only to see what they do with Christian, him and Christian and having the Hardy Boys, you know, there and having them feud one more time. I think that's just the selfishness in us fans only because we want to see it just for nostalgia purposes. I honestly wouldn't trip if he did go. I don't think it's necessary. I, it's one of those type of things. I, I personally don't think it's necessary um, for that to happen. Uh, I, I think, honestly, if he was to, you know, if he's truly done when it comes to WWE and wrestling as a whole, I'm okay. I'm okay with it. I would have preferred his last match been at WrestleMania and maybe like a, a John Cena or somebody else. Um, someone new. I, I get it. He wanted to work with Sheamus, so I understand that. But uh, outside of that, I just, I part of me, it's like part of me wants to see it, but at the same time, I'm not so sure. Him, him being AEW is the best thing. So we'll see if that does happen. I'm, I'm not gonna trip if it does. <laughs> Next up, huge changes coming to the WWE title scene. A better wrestling experience is reporting. Fans could see a change to the title picture. There's an opinion being discussed for the whole new title scheme in WWE. Revamps, new names, weight class, trios, etc. Again, mm. just an opinion discussed. Now that the WWE Endeavor merger is complete, expect to hear about more conversations on changing the WWE. Next up... Wait, did he say more titles? Hold on, let me see. Revamps, new names... New titles, schemes, weight classes... Hmm. Weight Gonna class, be... trios, etc. Again, just hmm. an opinion discussed. Now that the WWE Endeavor merger is complete, expect to hear about more conversations on changing the WWE. Next up, Jade Cargill headed to WWE. Now this so is what I really TBS want to know champion about. Jade Cargill wind up in the WWE? Well, that's the story making the rounds after a following report from Fightful Select. Fightful has spoken to sources within both AEW and WWE that believe she's headed to WWE. We should specify that we haven't heard of an official offer being made, and as always the case, things can change in the world of pro wrestling, including mm -hmm. a situation like this. Cargill returned to AEW at last week's collision with AEW booking a rematch between her and Chris Statlander, who dethroned her for the TBS Championship. However, the rematch is taking place on this Friday's Rampage. Now, if Cargill does leave AEW for the WWE, it'll be one of AEW's biggest blunders yet, as he has spent two and a half years booking Cargill as an unstoppable force until last May's Double or Nothing when Statlander returned and answered an open challenge, beating Jade for the TBS Championship. Mm. But would you guys like to see Jade Cargill in WWE? Let us know in the comments down below. That's very interesting. I know she has received criticism online. From uh, wrestling fans, you know, on how she, you know, feels about the business and stuff like that. Um, 
I will say this. If that does happen, they WWE is instantly going to make her a big star. I mean, she has the look of a star. They booked her as if she was a star. It's just the division she was in in AEW didn't really live up. Kind of, it, it's like the people she was beating, it didn't really matter. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know she was still a little green in the, in the wrestling ring, but I do feel like if she, granted, if she's been training or whatnot, I'm sure if she does go over to WWE, they're going to, you know, do some things to help her, you know, get better in the ring. I'm sure they will. Um, it'll be interesting. I, 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 I wouldn't be opposed to it. I would not be opposed to it. I know a lot of people already were speculating uh, Jay Cargill versus uh, Bianca Belair. Sign me up. <laughs> you know, there, there can be some definitely fresh matchups. So we will see how it plays out. But uh, you never know when it comes to these type of things. So. Hello. Next up, Elias gone from WWE. And while there's been no report of him being future endeavored, Better Wrestling Experience reports Elias is not currently under WWE oh, contract. Damn. Do you think Elias should stay in WWE? Let us know in the comments down below. I mean, they're not really doing much with him, so. And I don't even know if he goes to AEW, if they're going to do much with him there either, so I don't know. Next up, a tag team exits WWE. The WWE and the tag team The Dyad, aka Rip Fowler and Jagger Reed, have parted ways. Whilst this isn't a shocker, as they requested their release months ago only to be oh, turned damn. down, the circumstances for the exit is... Meltzer discussed this situation on the Wrestling Observer Radio, saying the other two, Rip Fowler and Jagger Reed, are gone. Their contract is up, and I thought that there was going to be some kind of angle or something, but it's just, they're gone. Oh, There's damn. no word on what's next for Fowler and Reed, or whether the WWE might mention their departure on a future episode of NXT. Next up, Drew McIntyre inking a new deal with the WWE. Could the universe see Drew McIntyre for several more years? Better Wrestling Experience is mm. reporting that the two-time WWE Champion will be re-upping with the WWE soon, noting, is Drew going to re-sign soon? Drew's current WWE contract is believed to expire around WrestleMania 40. And finally, oh. Bill Simmons fails test. And last but not least, sports broadcaster Bill Simmons had egg on his face after he made a startling suggestion to WWE President Nick Khan during a recent chat about the WWE Endeavor merger. During the interview, the subject of Stephanie McMahon arose with Simmons offering a way to bring the billion dollar princess back to TV. Couldn't she come back and do an angle where she and Tess are having an affair? Well, Nick can't handle things smoothly, replying, I think Tess passed away a couple of years ago. As most fans know, Andrew Tess Martin passed away in 2009. Rest in peace. Have it, folks. What the I'll look at Dynamite this What? <laughs> Tell me you haven't been watching the WWE product without telling me you haven't been watching the WWE product. Rest in peace, uh, uh, the test. Uh, yeah, that's kind of weird. No, we don't need to do angles like that, especially in the eight day and age of social media. No, no, let's stay away from the the those type of angles. I think we've seen enough of the McMahon's, you know, betraying each other and and disrespecting each other angles. I don't I don't think we need to see that no more in today's wrestling so comment down below let me know uh how y'all feel about some of these stories do you feel like jay cargill will uh come to wwe uh how do y'all feel about elias seemingly not being on television uh do y'all think he's gonna go to AEW or do y'all think he's gonna go somewhere else um yeah let me know how y'all feel about a lot of these stories that we talked about and that was shown to us today appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel road to 150k and i'm still here on the speed of youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see you on the next one peace